Hey everyone, this is SOLIDWORKS Tutorial 4.1. In this lesson, we're going to talk about assemblies. To start out, I've made three different parts. There's part one, part two, and part three. You can see here in this folder. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the New button, and we're going to make New Assembly, and click OK. That will open up a new assembly window. The property man manager starts us off by saying begin assembly and it says select a component to insert then place it into the graphics area or hit OK to locate it at the origin. So since I have these three part documents open they're in this list or I could browse for other ones if I wanted to. But what we're going to do is we're going to click this part one I'm not going to click out here in the graphics window yet, but you can see that this is the circular part, the cylindrical part. I can place it anywhere in this graphics window, or like it says in the property manager, I can click the green check to put it at the origin of the assembly. I would recommend this for the base part of your assembly, that you put it on the origin. That way it will be centered in your assembly space. So I'm going to click this green check, and you can see that the cylinder is there. In our design tree, we see that the assembly is the whole file, and we have this part file 1, part 1 inserted in, with all of its features and parts that go with it. And it has a little F in front of it, in parentheses, which means that that's the fixed part. The first part that goes into assembly is the base part, or the fixed part. Alright, so now we want to insert in another part, so I can insert in another component. In our property manager, it says select another part and we can go ahead and select part 2. Also in the property manager it says you can use the push pin to insert multiple copies of the same or different components. Hit OK button to insert the component at the origin, just like we did with the base. This time we don't want to have it inserted at the origin because we want it separate from that cylinder. And here's the push pin that they were talking about. We could insert multiple parts in there. But I'm just going to drop it down kind of here to the side and we're going to use mates to uh, relate it to the cylinder to start with. Mates are kind of like what relationships are in sketches. They relate different entities of parts together in the assembly. So I'm going to come up here and click on the mates tool. And the first thing that we're going to do is in our property manager we want to select entities to mate. So I'm going to click the middle mouse button down and hold it down to rotate. I'm going to click this surface here, so that face of that cylinder or that rectangle, and then the top face of this circle. So those both go in as selected entities. Then I've got all of these relationships that I can do. I can have it be coincident. Let's see if I can move this bar, it's kind of in the way. I do want it to be coincident. The next one is parallel, perpendicular. You can lock them where they are. You can have them be a certain distance from each other or an angle. You can flip the, the mate alignment so it would go upside down. Um, or you can undo or accept. So I'm going to accept the coincident relationship, which is what it started out with. And we don't notice any changes because it didn't have to move to get there. All right. So you can see that the bottom plane of that rectangle is coincident to the top plane of that cylinder. If I were to click and drag and move this part around, it would stay with that, even though it can move anywhere else in the X and the Y. It's a little bit difficult to see that movement, but let's go ahead and go to the isometric view, so we can see it from above. We'll kind of drag that around. You can imagine that those planes are touching, and that that can't come off the top of the cylinder, even if I bring it over here, it's at the same level as a cylinder. So now we want to restrict it, let's say with the X and the Z axis, axes, you can see that the X is going in this direction, if you look at this coordinate plane down here, and then the Z is going in this direction. So we have different features in our design tree that we can correlate or make coincident so that these two parts line up. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to use the two front planes. So I'm going to open up in my design tree the two parts, and you can see that they have two different front planes that relate to the part. You can also see that the assembly has a front plane, 
this for the whole assembly. This cylinder, because it was put at the origin of the assembly, its three planes line up automatically with these assembly planes. But we want to line up the part two front plane with the part one front plane. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of those with the, from the list. Remember that I have to hold control to select them. And then I'm going to go and hit mate and it automatically puts a coincident unless I change it and you can see that that lined up forward and back from that cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that one. And I'm going to do something similar with the uh, right planes. So uh, I already have the mate tool open so I'm going to use this temporary design tree. I'm going to open up both of those again and I'm going to click on this right plane there and this other right plane here and I'm going to go ahead and accept that. You can see that that put that right in the middle of that cylinder. And now if we were to try and move this rectangle around, it won't move anymore. It's fully defined with uh, the assembly. Now we're ready to insert it in the third part. So let's go ahead and insert it in another component. We're going to go ahead and pick this part three right here. And let's just drop it in over here. All right, if we rotate around, we can see that it's kind of put over in that place over there. Line ourselves back up. There's three different types of mate relationships that we can use, or three different entities that we can pick from. One is a point, one is a line or an edge, and then the other one is a face or a plane. So let's start by making a mate relationship between this point here on the triangle. Oh, I accidentally clicked the line. So I'm going to do delete. Let's do just the point and also this point here. So two vertices. You can see that that lined it up. So those points now have to be touching. We put in a coincident relationship and we're going to go ahead and click OK. If I were to click and drag this, you can see that that triangle can move anywhere as long as that point is still connected. So points will restrict it a little bit, but not very much at all. The second one is the edge. So we're going to click the mate tool again. We're going to click that top edge here, or this line, and rotate around so we can see. It might be blocking the whole thing. OK, we actually can't see that edge that we want to click on that's right there. So we're going to right click right here and say select other. And this gives us a list of objects that are behind that we can't click on because they're behind something else. So we'll kind of cycle through these. This top one is that face, another face, the face of the triangle, another face of the triangle, a back face of the, the rectangle, and then this edge. This is the edge that we want, so we're going to go ahead and select that. So now we have those two edges selected. We'll go ahead and line them up. They're coincident. And we'll go ahead and add that mate. So now if we line ourselves up with a view, we can see that that restricted it, so that line has to match up. So now we have kind of a hinge relationship between those. It can rotate all the way around. If we hadn't had that point there that was made it already, this line could slide back and forth, left and right, as long as those lines were, were collinear. So that point relationship that we added first stopped it from moving in that Z direction. The last one we're going to do is this mate between this face here and the back face of this triangle. So we're going to do our trick again. We're going to right click and here's the select other tool. We have all these options. We're actually going to use this face of the back of the triangle part. So we'll click that hold down control and click on this face here. So we're kind of doing it in a different order. We select first, then we click on the mate tool. You can do it either way, clicking on the mate first and then selecting the entities or select the entities and then click on the mate tool. And it automatically puts these in the entities and makes it coincident. So now we can go ahead and accept that. And click the green check again. And now that triangle is fully defined. It can't be moved. So now our assembly is done. It has all three parts in it. They're fully defined to be able to move where, or not move, but be related to what they need to be related to. 
If we had something like a car assembly and we wanted the wheels to still rotate, we wouldn't necessarily have to fully define our assembly. So if you have moving parts in your assembly, don't fully define it so that those parts can still move. But if you have a, an assembly that doesn't move, like this object here, you should work on fully defining it. All right, so now we have our assembly done. And you can see that in our design tree, we have the three parts. <clears throat> and as we open them up, we see that they each have planes. They have an origin. And then you can see how we built them. This first part, the rectangle, or the cylinder, has a sketch that's a circle, and it's just a boss extrude up. So you can see that that belongs in that part. You can go to the second part and see the same thing. It has planes and an origin. And it has its sketch, which is a rectangle, and it's just extruded up. And then the third part, same thing. It has another extrude with a triangle sketch. So everything is here. You can actually go in and modify these things if you want. So let's say I wanted to modify that sketch of that rectangle. So I can go in and edit the sketch from here. It says the assembly must be saved to perform this command. Let's go ahead and save that assembly. And then it should save it right where our other files are saved. All right, so it pops up and it asks us to save it. So let's save it as assembly. And it's going to add the SD, uh, SLD ASM as the extension. All right, so now that it saved the assembly, then we can edit that sketch. So let's go in and edit the sketch again. Okay, what this does is it says, it takes us into the command manager, which is edit component. So we see that, and now we're editing the sketch. And you see that the sketch is black here, it's fully defined. We can actually go in and click on these dimensions and modify them. So let's go to 1.25 for that width and change that. We can go ahead and accept that and exit the sketch. You can see that, that when we're editing a component, that component is colored and the rest kind of go transparent. So let's exit the component now. You can see that that's a little bit thicker. Sometimes when you edit things, they don't modify automatically. And up here, there's a rebuild button. This can be used at the part level as well. If you click this button, it makes sure, it makes sure that everything in the part is current. So every change that's been made is updated. We'll see if we can use that better in the future so we can see when we'll have to use it. But if ever anything that you modify doesn't get modified, and you don't see the change, then you can click that rebuild button. All right, so there's the introduction to the assembly.